good afternoon welcome everybody thank you for attending our webinar on e invoicing before we start a few announcements if you have any questions you can either type it in the chat or you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you at appropriate times and you can ask your questions i also request participants to change their name put their real name in the zoom software like we see names like motorola or some whatever name that your software has given so just put your name that so that it will be easy to identify you if you have not answered the poll uh, please do answer we see only 67% of the people who are who have attended are here right now have participated um, please answer so that that will give us a good indication of who is in the audience and we can talk appropriately okay so let me get started here is the outline of today's webinar first we'll go through the basics of e invoicing what is an e invoice what are the legal provisions why do we have it in the first place and then we'll talk about how to create an account in the portals there are multiple portals so you should create in the right portals before you can get started we'll also talk about how to integrate through excel utilities and through apis we'll also have we'll give a rough idea of how to do it and then we'll also have live demos we'll also talk about generating an invoice how to validate an e invoice and to send invoice to the customer we'll also go over some of gst zens offerings a brief introduction about gst zen my name is surya subramanian i head the technical department at gst zen gst zen provides return filing software for all the major returns gst r 13b 9 and 9c we also have lot of reconciliation reports such as books versus 2a or 2b Uh, a consolidated report, and we have pan level reports, e waivable reports, a lot of reports uh, to help you make sure that you are uh, complying correctly with uh, GST. And we have lots of other tools. Uh, if you are coming to GST and only for e invoicing for the first time, I request you to take a look at our other offerings as well. Here's how we are doing. We have about thirty thousand users. We have lakhs of reports downloaded in a year. Uh, about a million invoices we process every day, and we have about twenty crore invoices in our uh, database. Uh, as far as e invoicing is concerned, our users generate one invoice every one to two seconds. So as I speak, as I complete the sentence, about three or four invoices are getting generated in GST season right now, and of course we expect it to increase further. when the 20 crores and above tax payers enter the e invoicing realm let's look at the progress of e invoicing in india e invoicing started first with 500 crore and above tax payers tax payers with aggregate turnovers more than 500 crores in october 2020 and january 2021 the limit was lower to 100 crores and above tax payers a year ago 1st april 2021 the limit became 50 crores and now the the latest no, as per the latest notifications tax payers 20 crores and above will be in the e invoicing uh, bracket and the system has worked smoothly and people have generated i think even millions if not billions of e invoices let's here's a schematic diagram that gstn usually shows to explain why e invoicing is necessary here are pictures of plug points shown in various types or various countries of the world so if you have a laptop or a mobile phone and a charger if you want to go to a different country you will not be able to plug your laptop into the socket there you will need some kind of an adapter to plug it in 
and the solution that frequent travel travelers use is what's called a universal adapter that will go and fit into every socket of the world so now instead of these sockets imagine different billing softwares erps there are people who prepare invoices in excel people who do not prepare invoices even in a the computer there are people who use uh, tally sap billing software quickbooks so on and so forth there is there is a lot of variety and diversity in india and people prepare invoices in different ways and one software's invoice cannot be processed by another software it still needs somebody to go read understand the contents punch it in you can think of e invoice as a universal format a universal adapter for all invoices so the invoices prepared by all software vendors will be the same the single format set by the government of india and soon we hope the invoice from one software can easily flow into other software now let's go over the legal provisions of e invoicing let's start with who is required to issue invoicing we already started we saw with the trajectory from 500 crores and 20 crores the most recent notification is central tax notification number 1 bar 2020 and in as per this notification taxpayers with turnover 20 crores and above with aggregate turnover 20 crores and above are required to generate invoices and the requirement starts from the next financial year that is the 1st of april 2022 about 15 days away here are the relevant notification and rules which gives legal strength to the e invoicing uh, regime right the main notification is cgst notification 68 bar 2019 as per this notification there were modifications to rule 48 rule 48 deals with the manner of issuing an invoice what this rule says it it says how you have to issue an invoice and how do you prepare and whom do you have to give it and so on and so forth there have been three sub rules that have been added here the first sub rule the mo- which says 48 sub rule 4 which defines the form gst inv1 says that you have to prepare an invoice as per the schema notified by the government and more importantly you will have to go register this invoice in the relevant portals that are authorized by the government rule number 48 sub rule 5 says an invoice other than the above that is sub rule 4 is not a valid invoice so for example until now taxpayers would have printed invoices on paper or digitally signed invoices in a pdf they would have printed on paper and signed it and sealed it for those taxpayers for whom e invoicing is applicable this method will no longer be a valid invoice whatever you print is just a piece of paper unless you have an electronic invoice and you go to the government's authorized portal and register it and get the invoice reference number and acknowledgement number it is not a valid invoice furthermore sub rule 6 says multiple copies of invoices are not required so until now the rule says you have to give the original to the customer duplicate to transporter and the triplicate with the supplier all these uh, provisions these are not required if you are generating an electronic invoice just an elect- the e invoice generation and transmission of that e invoice that alone is sufficient and we talked about what is the authorized portal the strength for that comes from notification number 69 2019 right now there is one common portal www.einvoice1.gst.gov.in i see somebody raising their hand if you want to Uh, just wait for a t- uh, wait for some time while we go over the qu- while we finish the initial parts if you have a question you can type it on the chat so the common portal is the invoice1.gst.gov.in there are expected to be more uh, portals also that will go live though up till 10 portals are notified at this moment notification 60 bar 2020 specifies the schema the fields of the invoice the fields of the in the form inv01 
So this tells you that your invoice needs to have a supplier, a supplier GST number, a supplier needs to have an address, a bill to, ship to, line items, HSN code, all the fields that needs to be there in the invoice, the mandatory fields and the optional fields. There are optional fields like the purchase order number, purchase order date, so on and so forth. So all these fields can be provided in the invoice and the schema for that is given in the INV01 form. Other than the taxpayers with annual aggregate turnover 20 crores and above, among these taxpayers, some taxpayers are exempt from e-invoicing. So if your registration is in a special economic zone unit, so if your registration type says SEZ, then you do not need to generate e-invoices. Also, the following four categories mentioned here, this is also in CGST subrule 4, uh, CGST rule 54, subrules 2, 3, 4, and 4A. Uh, fintech companies, uh, banks, financial institutions, uh, basically NBFCs and banks do not need to generate e-invoices. If you are a transport agency, the tickets that you sell, you don't have to generate e-invoices. Uh, the same, uh, the passenger transport for that, you do not have to generate e invoices. And if you have a cinema hall and you're admitting people, tickets for the same, admission for the same is not covered under e invoicing. So this is updated as per notification 61 bar 2020. So this is broadly the notifications. Now let's look at what transactions. Please refer to this slide. We'll send out these slides later. A lot of people ask questions as to which transaction is covered. So in this slide, there are two parts. On the left-hand side, you can see the documents. Which documents are covered under e-invoicing on the right-hand side? What is the type of the nature of transaction? Transactions that come under e-invoicing are shown in green color. The others are shown in red color. Let's, let's just go over them. Invoices, credit notes, and debit notes come under e-invoicing. So if you are issuing a tax invoice, credit note or a debit note, you need to generate an e-invoice. If you are issuing a bill of supply, if you are selling exempt goods, and if you are issuing a bill of supply, then you do not need to generate an e-invoice. Again, when we use the word e-invoice, you should think of it as e-document. So e-credit note, e-debit note, e-invoice, they're all e-invoices. So when you're issuing a bill of supply for exempt goods, there is no e-invoice or e-invoice registration necessary. A delivery chalan for moving goods from one warehouse to another within the same state. If the goods are moved on a delivery chalan, e-invoice not required. ISD, if you're an input service distributor, the invoice that you, the ISD issues, e invoice is not required. So these are the documents that are required and documents that are not required. So now let me mention the type of transactions. B2B transactions, B2G transactions. So if you are issuing an invoice to a registered taxpayer, you need to issue an e invoice. If you're issuing an invoice to a government taxpayer, if the taxpayer has a TDS deduct deductor number, then you should issue an e-invoice. If you are exporting goods or services and the recipient is outside India, even though they do not have a registration number, you should issue an e-invoice. B2C invoices, retail invoices, where the consumer is an unregistered taxpayer, an unregistered person does not have a registration you do not have to issue a e invoice. A lot of people make entries for purchase under reverse charge. If you make a purchase from an unregistered dealer, there is no e invoice, there's no such transaction. You don't have to do anything about it. Of course, if you are making a purchase from a registered taxpayer under reverse charge, your supplier, if e invoicing provision is applicable, they will generate an e-invoice. Any imports of goods or services, these transactions do not come under e-invoicing. 
I hope this is clear. Uh, again, some I think very early in this talk, people ask questions on the chat about exempt versus non-exempt, right? If it's a bill of supply only exempt goods, no e invoicing is necessary. So let's talk about registration. Who should register and where? By the way, a very common question that people ask. How do I calculate my aggregate turnover? The annual aggregate turnover is the summation of your taxable turnover and exempt turnover. Moreover, if you have multiple GST registrations and if there is some turnover from one state to the other, some sale, even though that sale will not be included in your financial statements, it will not reflect in your PNL, but it will reflect in your GST returns as turnover that has to be included in your aggregate turnover. So exempt turnover plus non-exempt turnover. Again, a very common question. My exempt turnover is 25 crores. My non-exempt turnover is 1 lakh. Do I need to generate invoices? The answer is yes. Okay. If you are a registered taxpayer, that aggregate turnover is more than 20 crores, you need to generate e-invoices. So these are the portals. There is this portal called einv-apisandbox.nic.in. This is only for software developers who want to develop against the schema. You will go here and make registrations. If you are a normal taxpayer who wants to test and use the system, you will go to e-invoice1-trial.nic.in. You can go here and uh, prepare invoices, upload JSON files. The similar facility will also be available in e-invoice1.gst.gov.in. Once things go live, this is the main website. The reasons why we are showing all these three websites here on the screen, a common mistake that lots of taxpayers do, they generate on the trial website and they remain on the trial website for a very long time. We had this with 100 crores, 500 crore taxpayers, like six months after we, we went live, we came to understand that they were still generating invoices on the trial websites. So please do not do that. Please make sure that you're generating it on the real portal invoice1.gst.gov.in. And one method to verify that is to go to the government portal gst.gov.in and see if your invoices are reflecting. Your invoices will take about 72 hours, but after that, make sure that the invoice come to the GSTR1. Here are the other portals. Most of these are available in the trial and the live portals. You can check who has already generated e-invoice. You can check whether you are enabled for generating e-invoice. By the way, it is every taxpayer's responsibility to make sure that they comply with the law even if the government has not enabled you, but if you are required by the law, please go make sure, file a ticket and make sure that you are eligible and you are able to generate e-invoices. There are other utilities to verify e-invoices. I'll show some of these utilities uh, in the course of the demo. So here is the overall process for generating e-invoices. The taxpayer uploads invoice in the correct format, in the JSON format, using whatever tool. You can man manually go and push it to the government portal. You can use uh, Excel utilities. You can use APIs. You can use GSTs and you can use Tally. Even you can use any software. But finally, the destination is the API interface maintained by the government and it goes to the e-invoice register. Right now, there's only one register run by NIC. So the register checks that this invoice has not already been generated. And then from there, the invoices flow to the eway bill system and to the GST common portal. In return, the taxpayer receives a digitally signed invoice. When I say digitally signed invoice, it's the contents of the invoice. This is not uh, this is not a digital PDF or anything. Again, we'll go over a sample. We'll understand what digitally signed means. This is when we go to the live demo. And also the customers GSTR 2A will get populated and GSTR 2B will get populated after you file the return. So this is how the data flows in the e-invoicing system. So here is a small animation to illustrate the same. 
So from the supplier, the e invoice goes to the e GST system. There are multiple registrars. From the one of those registrars, the invoice goes to the eWable portal, goes to the GSTR1, which is the government portal uh, the, run by GSTN. And it also goes to the recipients, GSTR2A. And there is a proposal to send these invoices to other players down the line, like bankers. Uh, and of course, once the recipient receives it, transactions can be posted with APIs and into software's just tally. Users will be able to import the invoices directly from the government portal. Let me go over a few terms and definitions. So the most common thing that you will hear in an e-invoice is what is called invoice reference number or IRN. These are the details. It consists of the, you can see the IRN here at the bottom. It is a 64 digit alphanumeric number. You can see it starting with the digits four, five and ending with E4. This number is meant only for computers. As human beings, I would request the viewers just ignore this. If you are building some software, take this number and store it in your database. Otherwise, there is nobody who is going to type this. At the most, you will copy paste this and check somewhere. I don't see any utility for this other than for uh, systems to check and verify and match invoices. In any case, this invoice number is unique across the entire e-invoice system. So the number generated by one taxpayer will not, will not collide with the number generated by another taxpayer. For example, two taxpayers could both generate invoice number INB-001, but they will all have different IRN numbers. So that is the main purpose. So the IRP portal or invoice registration portal. Right now, this portal is e-invoice1.gst.gov.in. So the taxpayer will upload their JSON to the IRP portal. The IRP will check whether this invoice has already been generated. And the IRP portal will send it to the eWable portal and the GST common portal. So that is the overview of what the IRP does. The most important thing to understand, the IRP will not va validate the contents of your invoice. The IRP will simply check high level details of the invoice and the IRP will send the invoice to the other places. The IRP is not going to check whether if you're selling a computer, a computer should be, let's say 20,000 rupees, but you are selling it only for 200 rupees. The IRP is not going to check all of that. I are, or the tax rate is 28%, but you're charging 5%. Those types of checks, the IRP does not do. So the first, this is authorized by the government as per the notifications. We already saw that the first IRP is run by the National Informatics Center, NIC. It verifies and acknowledges info, invoices. The time to verify and receive an e invoice is the blink of an eye, less than 100 milliseconds. It retains the invoices for about 24 to 72 hours, and it does not contain a listing. So if you go to the IRP, you will not get old invoices. You will have to keep them safely in your database for compliance purposes and audits or checks. We have lots of users who maintain invoices in their databases. Someday database gets corrupt. They don't have backups so or they've lost that. We urge you to consider these things carefully when choosing an e-invoicing solution, make sure that you have a system where you do not lose the data. For example, invoices that use GST Zen's Excel utility or our enriched APIs, the invoice stays there. There is a history. Any day you come, you'll be able to see that. Now, let's look at how the response looks from the invoice registration portal. As already mentioned, everything in GST is a JSON 
So here is a JSON indicating the response. Though it's JSON complicated and all that, finally it's a bunch of just human readable characters. You should be able to read this. So here you can see the acknowledgement number. You can see the acknowledgement date. You can see the IRN number, the 64 characters. There's also a signed invoice. Again, lots of people ask me, hey, what is the signed invoice, right? This is nothing but it's a bunch of characters with some encoded in some algorithm, about 4,000 characters. If you use the right programs and if you can decode it, you can verify that this is a valid invoice. There is also a signed QR code, which is a short representation of the invoice. It's about 1,000 characters. You will display this as an image in when you print the invoice. If somebody scans the invoice, you should be able to verify that this is a valid, genuine invoice. Of course, there's a status, there are other e-wayable details. So this is the response that we get from the IRP website. Here is how a printout of the invoice looks in the government portal. So here is a here are the details below here, the IRN number, acknowledgement number, date. There is also the QR code on the right, the type of transactions. Finally, whatever is there in the JSON gets displayed here on the screen. Let me talk a few moments about the signed QR code. We saw in this previous screen, signed QR code is nothing. It's a bunch of characters. Again, to not ordinary people, there will it will not make any sense. What you need to do, this is for software developers. You take the signed QR code as it is and convert it into an image and display it here. Lots of people have seen QR codes. There are newspaper advertisements. There, there are posters, hoardings. And there is a QR code. If you scan the QR code application, you'll scan your camera. It will give you a URL and it will take you to some website. That is the purpose. Essentially, a QR code is nothing but it is encoding a bunch of characters. So in this case, this QR code, this image that you're seeing on the screen is encoding these characters, E, Y, J, H, B shown on the screen. So if you scan it, all that you will see is these characters, E, Y, J, H, B. There'll be no meaning. You will not understand. However, for a computer program, these characters have a meaning and you can decode it. The government has given a utility, mobile utility. You go scan a QR code. It will tell you whether it's a valid E invoice. The QR code encodes some information. Again, we saw that EY, those characters which do not make any sense, right? EY, JHB, GC, these characters do not make any sense to the ordinary user. But if you decode it, you will get a buyer GST number, a document date, document number, so on and so forth, and all these other details. So let's look at e-invoice generation through GST ZIN. This is a high level schematic picture. On the left, you have your ERP accounting software. The details from your ERP goes into the GST ZIN's validator, either on your premises or on our server. Either the data has to be valid. If there is any errors, it will get thrown back to you. If the data is valid, GST ZIN will send it to the IRP, the government portal. And GSTZN will receive the IRN, the digital signature, the QR code, and save the data back in your ERP. This is a high level schematic. This is the same picture. You can replace GSTZN with any software. This is what an e invoicing module or e invoicing software is supposed to do take data from your ERP, send it to the government, and bring it back and save the details. Of course, if you have, if you are using an Excel file, the data from your Excel file has to go to the government and come back and you need to save the transaction numbers by IRN acknowledgement somewhere. So GSC has multiple solutions. From left to right, we are talking about the solutions with the, based on their ease of use, the Excel drag and drop solutions are the easy to get started, but a little bit difficult to use. Secure folder is much more easy to use, very little human intervention. If you use our APIs and or our Tally SAP integration, you press a button, e-invoice will get generated. Like in a millisecond, you can generate e-invoices. So I will pause a little bit. I'll open 
the floor to to questions once i walk go over some of the questions that users have asked then i'll go over the faqs that i have prepared if you have any questions please type them on chat or you may raise your hand If you have any questions, please raise your hand. We can unmute, or you can type it on chat. Is it applicable to export invoice parent entity in Singapore? All export invoices will come under e invoicing. if anybody wants to ask a question please unmute ask to unmute yourself and we can unmute yeah just a second mr anand mohan yeah please go ahead uh, sir good afternoon good afternoon sir uh, sir i have a question that uh, i want to know that uh, as you told that when in the while i will, I will while i go for the api integration okay in that case uh, Uh, after post bag, I'll get uh, some sort of uh, uh, codes uh, for the QR. Okay. Now I Very want fair. to yes, I want to know that how to decode that QR code because uh, I want to store that code in my system and then I want to uh, convert it to the image, the image of QR. Then is there an, any utility that will convert that QR script into QR code? sure sir so let so you are asking two questions let me answer the second question first right how you convert the image into qr is you can use any library any utility you can go search online and find out qr code generator if you type in a bunch of characters say hello then the okay. qr code generator will show you hello That's what yeah, you need to do. Okay, sir. That is okay. But uh, the 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 given QR code which we receive from the IRP, it's yes, a some different one because uh, when, uh, because yesterday I was doing the trial. Okay, and I generated the e invoice at your uh, sandbox, and uh, the QR code it was not read by the ordinary QR code reader. Okay, the, then I downloaded that APK from the uh, IRN for IRN tools uh, place. Okay. then that qr code reader it only uh, read, read that qr code that's why some sort of no 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 any qr code reader should be able to read this qr code no sir if, if you will go and check it out then you will find that uh, the normal qr code reader they are not uh, sir we can take it, it offline sir a qr code reader only reads a bunch of characters yes sir so that after is... you read the characters you will get these characters e y j h b that's what you are supposed to get If you type my name Surya in a QR code, when you read, you will get Surya. Okay, you are a person who understands English. When you read the characters S U R I Y A, it makes sense to you. If yes, you sir. I, I, if you are yeah, an illiterate yeah. person, you would not know what those characters mean. Yes, sir. I was I I was thinking like that because the normal QR code it works in this manner only. But uh, when I uh, when when I, I was trying to uh, just uh, decode this QR code by using the ordinary QR code reader, that ordinary QR code reader was not able to decode that. Then I downloaded that uh, special right. QR code reader from that uh, from the IP uh, it from the IRP uh, IRP's portal. Then it uh, started reading that and it showed the entire details that the supplier GST number, the the seller. Uh, the buyers and the, uh, and at the bottom it was yeah. written that uh, signed invoice all the information then it started showing that's sir, why sir, so we'll see. we'll take this offline uh, outside this webinar all okay. I, uh, there is no difference between an ordinary qr code and this one that there is a resolution that's why, issue that was i was uh, very much surprised that uh, why they have uh, put the, this kind of bigger a uh, no, normal person he will just start uh, decode the, uh, he will read the this qr code only by the uh, the, the the normal available qr code reader correct correct so if you read yes. by normal reader you will get these characters yes if you get these characters that is enough that is all you uh, need to do yes sir and and sir you could do it by yourself because uh, one invoice i i have prepared at your portal uh, at no, your, no, sir uh, we have done lots of invoices so i know how these things work yes, right that's how we have built the tool 
yes sir that's why that's why i understand sir yeah. so you will not so the bunch uh-huh. of characters have to decode there is some intelligence required i'll show it to you a little bit later okay, okay sir okay okay sir thank you very much surya sir yeah so if there are any other questions where the users uh, want to ask orally we can unmute okay so let me go over some of the questions on the chat so i see that uh, venu ca venu gopal gella uh, thank you for attending the webinar you are a very big source of support for me and our company uh, so he is answered questions on the chat so if uh, any questions are pending uh, please raise your hand or type them again so ca satish m is there any time limit to generate irn right now the portal allows you to generate irn any time after the date of invoice so any so today is 15th of march any invoice dated 15th of march or prior to that you will be able to generate in the portal of course you will not be able to generate invoices in the future mr saravanan please unmute yourself yes sir good afternoon sir this is r saravanan deputy director of finance from indian maritime university yes sir good afternoon our is a central university sir and our uh, <coughs> basic supplies are totally exempted since it is an educational services okay so do we need to go for e invoicing since it is a b2c maximum 90% of our transactions are b2c only one second let me just uh, get uh, venu's help sir so, venu are you able to unmute uh could you repeat your question again yes sir ours is a central ours is a central university okay sir our exam our uh, service is a education service and it is totally exempted but still we have gone for a registration and now my question is that uh, are we uh, and our turnover is more than 100 crores per annum okay so my first question is is it required for us to go for e invoice registration yeah so sharanan sir i would answer answer it this way yeah. you would have some kind of uh, taxable supplies maybe you have some portion of the university uh, a hall or anything let out for commercial activities or you may take some coaching activities which is pers- beyond the so you might have some supplies which are taxable exactly sir to levy gst Correct. do you have anything like that yes sir 90% is exempted 10% is uh, taxable yes in those 10% taxable some of them are to registered person some of them are to unregistered person maybe 6% to unregistered person 4% to registered person to okay. the 4% of the transactions you are supposed to do e invoice okay so uh, only for that 4% i am supposed to do in that scenario do i need to go for a registration yes only when you register into the e invoice portal you will be do even if you have one invoice for full year you still have to do e invoice okay so even if i let out uh, my auditorium or uh, giving a, a space for bank so i am supposed to produce e invoice correct from 1422 Car- uh, since you are saying more than 100 crores it uh, it dates back to 1st jan 2021 okay right sir thank you sir thank you okay uh, thank you so general question that people are asked about cancellation of invoices i will cover that in later slides however the general rule everybody should know is whether it's a e invoice or not once you prepare an invoice you cannot modify as per the gst rules if it is a wrong entry you can cancel the invoice however modifications are not are allowed as per gst rules modifications are not allowed as per the e invoice provisions also okay we'll go over the details there are 24 hours to cancel we'll just go over that shortly a, after a few more slides uh, some questions can we generate e waybill manually even after getting the e invoice generated 
through API. So if the e invoice is generated through API, it will be very easy to go to the portal and generate the e -Wable. You only have to enter the vehicle numbers and the e invoice will get generated. So Tally Prime, if you're using Tally Prime, GST Zen has solutions for e invoicing with Tally Prime. Tally Prime themselves, they have solutions. Uh, so you can use one of these. What is the difference between GSP and ERP? I think it's just an academic difference. Uh, they're all the same. They all have access to the e invoicing portal. For taxpayers with turnovers below 500 crores, you will have to go through an ERP or a GSP in order to generate e invoices. Mr. Masilamani, I have unmuted you. Could you please uh, see your hand raised? Please ask your question. Sir, we have uh, GST registered the uh, one GST in, in three places. Same state. Okay. And all three places we are raising the invoice currently. Okay. And how to integrate? Because, for example, if I am generating an invoice in one location by 11 o'clock, other location by 12 o'clock, the synchronizing, how we can be able to manage. In other words, it should come on the first come first. The first invoice created in Chennai, for example, second invoice created in Chandalpet, same state. Third one is in uh, uh, Ranipet or some places. All three invoices, all three places, currently we have a software, same software only. We are raising the invoices. How to upload that into the e-invoice portal and get e-invoice generated? So are these softwares, so your question of three software, I am not able to understand. So are these software connected to each other? Is it going to the same database? Yes. Yes. So then it's like only one software, right? So I, whether it's in Chengalpet or Ranipet does not matter. There's only one software and no, invoices no, no. are prepared. One software, one software, three databases. Three different databases are there, correct? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So the invoice, now your question is, okay. The invoice series in those three databases are different. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so there are three. So those three softwares can independently go to the government. There is no synchronization required here. So Chengalpet slash one, Chengalpet slash two, you will register. Use a different billing series. That's it, right? And now your question is, how will I register with ERP? We can see, like, I, I mean, we'll show you in Excel. We'll show you APIs. There are so many solutions. You can use yeah. one of these solutions, whether you're using one software or 100 software does not matter. The concept is the same. I will show you a demo with one software, then you will see. Uh, see, until now, I think invoicing is very theoretical. You don't understand what it means. I'll just show you a live demo in some minutes. Then you will understand what it actually means. And if okay. you still and have questions, I'd be happy to answer. Yeah, one more question also I have, sir. Currently, yes, we are not uh, raising the e uh, bill for the invoice amount less than 50,000 for a given distance. Now, in future, this e uh, portal, whether that is applicable or for all, even if it's a one rupee, two rupee invoice, also we have to go for the e invoice. Sir, for one rupee invoice, also you have to generate e invoice. EVA bill is not required for one rupee invoice. EVA bill rules are not changed. If your question is, okay, I did so not generate EVA bill. Do I have to generate e invoice? Yeah. No, the answer is yes. You will have to generate e invoice even for yes. one rupee transaction. But EVA bill not mandatory. Not yes, EVA bill is not mandatory. Correct. Okay, and I, I think again, Venu is answering most of the questions on the chat. Okay, let me go over the questions that I have already prepared. Can I get the time, please? You have 15 more minutes. Please continue. 
15 more minutes okay sir would you share this presentation for yeah we will share the presentation thank you okay so let me go over some of the most frequently asked questions at what time is the invoice required for a particular transaction and in invoice is required sir if the last date of sir let me go over i'm running a little bit short on time and i will get back to you you can stay a little bit longer okay okay so the invoice for movement of goods before you commence the movement of goods the invoice has to be generated if you are selling somebody to to some goods to somebody across the counter like uh, like metro geo mart so on and so forth before the invoice before giving the goods to the other party you should generate the invoice if it is a service before issuing the invoice to the customer you should generate the invoice and how do eweables work uh, was a question which we just addressed the eweable rules are not have not changed is the same rules rule 138 of cgst wherever eweable is required it will still continue to, to be required however before generating eweable you have to generate the e invoice irn and if you want to cancel the invoice you have to first cancel the eweable and only then you will be able to cancel the invoice lots of questions about people have asked about how to print the e invoice if you are as per the rules printing of invoice is not required is not mandatory however if you are printing you should print it with the irn number and the qr code when moving the goods a qr code in a digital display is sufficient as per the rules how to send the invoice to the customer so the irp website will not send it today there is no such provision the irp gives the email gives you the acknowledgement details our suggestion is send it back to the customer along with the pdf send the acknowledgement details at some point in the future the government will have a system where you can send the invoice to the customers directly if you are a software provider what details should you save in your erp you should save your acknowledgement number the acknowledgement date the signed invoice the qr code in fact any detail that comes from the erp you should save it because it will be useful for any audit purposes and troubleshooting down the line the most common question until what time can i register an invoice and when can i cancel let's talk about registration before issuing the invoice you should register it with the irp we recommend that you register within 48 hours however there is no limit enforced by the government portal today can the e invoice be cancelled yes the invoice can be cancelled and you should cancel it within 24 hours after generation can the e beyond 24 hours you cannot cancel it in the irp portal beyond 24 hours what you should do you should cancel in your book of accounts and make sure that it gets cancelled in the it does not get reported in the gstr1 make sure that it doesn't go into gstr1 and a can a e invoice be modified no it cannot be modified if you have made a mistake you have to cancel it create another invoice with a different number you cannot reuse the same old number for which you have generated an e invoice so if you have generated an e invoice by and there is an error and you have not cancelled it within 24 hours so cancel in the book of accounts and make sure that you do not report the invoice in the gst returns so these are the only two things that you can do again if possible cancel before 24 hours so the common errors that we have seen people when they go onboarded hsn code errors please use gsts and hsn validator pin code usually doesn't match the state or it's wrong please go check it in this portal and if the recipient gst number gets cancelled again people know the gst numbers get cancelled very often so please go check up front there's nothing much you can do 
once you see the error react to the error there'll be other lots of error schema errors and all that just use proper software you will not get these errors so i am running a little bit low on time so what i will do is i'll just go directly to the demos i'll just generate a few invoices for you and i'll show them to you and then we'll have more questions and we'll take it from there i hope you are able to see my screen so this is gst zen software this is our dashboard there are multiple gst numbers here so let me go to one of our gst numbers for which i am going to generate an e invoice i will prepare an invoice in front of you and i will show it to you so this is gst zen software this is our sales register so i'll just say a new b2b sales invoice so this is our company the supplier i'll try to find some recipient here that has a good name okay i'll send to this supplier so here is the invoice number let me give a new number here webinar 15/001 i'll give today's date okay since people asked back dated invoices i'll give yesterday's date as an example 14th i'll enter the items for the invoice let me sell a few table i'll sell a table let's say it's worth 2000 rupees and i'll add a few chairs i'll sell four chairs let's say they are 400 rupees each right so now how i have the tables have different tax rates the chairs have different tax rates this is 2600 rupees here is my total 4128 including taxes so this is an invoice that you can see in gst zen you can also see a pdf of this invoice Where is the PDF? Yeah, so here is the PDF of the invoice. It's a nothing fancy. It's just a regular invoice. There's a seller details, pin code, uh, buyer detail, uh, seller details, buyer details, and the items of the invoice. More importantly, there's no QR code. There's no IRN. There's nothing here. So the, I'll generate the invoice. So what does it take to generate an invoice? You press this button, and that's it. The invoice gets generated. So here you can see the IRN number. There's a green on the, the left top. Pardon? The green yeah. tick e invoice. So there is a green tick here to indicate that the e invoice is generated. So here is the IRN number. We can see that the invoice is issued by the testing sandbox. Here is the date, three fifty seven, and on the fifteenth of March. And here is the acknowledgement number. So this is what it takes to generate an e invoice. let me select the pdf again for you now you will see the pdf will contain the irn number the acknowledgement number date and the signed qr code so this is what it takes to generate an e invoice and this is what is the process so when you generate an e invoice you will also get an acknowledgement json this is the acknowledgement that we get from the government portal so the government portal has this utility e invoice 1.gst at gov.in in this utility there is a verify signed invoice utility i'll go here and i'll upload these details and you will see that this is a digitally signed invoice and here is irn number the same irn number that you see on the other screen 11 fed you will see here 11 fed and the same time 357 the qr code the details tables chairs so on and so forth so this is pretty much it so the invoice went from our side to the government side and there is this json you can give this json to anybody they will be able to go to the government website and verify ideally they'll have some automatic tools that will verify that but the point i'm trying to make is that you can verify this and nobody has to come like there's no proof there's no login required you can actually like today people say have you uploaded the invoice in gstr one send me a screen uh, send me a screenshot all that is not required if you have this file anybody can go and verify the invoice so this is what it takes to generate an invoice one invoice at a time we do have people who generate invoices in bulk i'll show it to you over excel so here is an excel utility here is an excel file with the details of invoices i have a few invoices here 
all right uh, so there is an invoice here is a debit note here is a credit note and this is a regular file with various columns such as document number date supplier gst number recipient gst number so on and so forth so all i'm going to do is i'm going to generate e invoices for the same let me go to the gsts and software here gsts and software and e has an e invoicing module there are multiple different ways to generate one of these is your excel if you have a custom excel template from your erp you can map those columns and generate here here i'm going to use our gsts and software's default template and i am going to upload this file once i upload the file you will see in a few seconds our software will process these uh, details and the invoices will get loaded here you can see now that there are eight invoices here this is the amount you can also see the invoices here on the screen the eight invoices here are on the screen couple of invoices are export invoices that's why they do not have a gst number here is a key legend showing a green tick means e invoice generated yellow circle means e invoice not yet generated red means error so the invoices have come into gsts and now let's let me press this button and i'll say upload e invoices the invoices will go from our software to the government portal and the e invoices will get generated so now software is going one by one generating those e invoices and you can see so this is how long it takes to generate the e invoices you can see there are green ticks everywhere let me click on one of these pdfs so if you open the pdf you will be able to see the irn number the acknowledgement date you can see it's 401 uh, 1601 pm on uh, 15th of march here is the qr code so this is the process this is what it takes to generate a uh, e invoice through excel and i also showed to you generate on the screen let me open this invoice so here are the details now what did it what does it take to cancel the invoice so there is a cancel invoice button i just have to press this button and you will see that the invoice is cancelled so that is pretty much it that's all it takes let me go to the gst sense sales register and you will see the invoices that are generated you will see the invoices that are cancelled this data is available for you for use any time there are also some helpful dashboards here you can see how many invoices are generated today one cancelled if you want to see the can for example how many gen invoices generated in the last week there are two invoices generate cancelled i just want to see those two invoices yeah you can go and filter so have so you you are able to generate with excel and then you are able to come here and analyze and view these invoices and have them for your future reference so that brings me to, to the end of the excel and the on screen demo i also try to show how to generate an invoice through an api so i have this api there is a software called website called hopscotch i can generate if i have the json here i will be able to generate e invoices so let me just put some number here march 15 Zero 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 two, and let me give today's date. Yeah. So if you, if I just say press the send button, the e invoice will get generated. Let me just see here. You can see I R N generated. You can see the time. Four o three. Now for software developers, this is all it takes. You take this JSON, and you come here and you send it. you send it to this address the e invoices will get generated that's it and save this details i mr anand mohan i think he asked some questions about what is the qr code how to decode so let me copy the signed qr code here so gst sen has lots of utilities so one of these utilities is a signed qr code validator so i can go here and i can paste the signed qr code and you will see 
that these are the details you will see that th this is the recipient gst number you will see the qr code you will see the amount in words you will see when it was generated you will see the acknowledgement date you will, you will see that it was generated on 16.03 uh, 16.03 pm and so on and so forth so this is a qr code validator let me do one thing let me just change one character let me remove one character there's a character g i'll just remove this and then you will validate you will say that it is an invalid qr code so this is just to give you indication that this is encrypted oh, so this is not encrypted sorry this is digitally signed this is tamper proof if you change one character somewhere you will uh, lose all the data you will not be able to correctly validate it right and so now i add the character back you will be able to get all the details it also tell that this is generated in the sandbox portal you can if you are generated in the official portal you will know that information as well so just to give you an to summarize what we did we generated e invoice through multiple means we have validated the e invoice in the government portal we validated in our own gst since utility right and uh, any software provider they should be able to validate if they know what is the algorithm and if they use the correct keys let me get back to my slides and i'll just show you the the solutions that we have i'm running short on time so this is the these are the fields of the e invoice schema you should be able to um, we'll share these slides however the summary uh, what i want to summarize is that the details that are there in the invoice such as the buyer details seller details invoice number date the line item details will all be converted into json format and shown in the screen yeah so let me go over gst sense offering i had all be so this is a high level picture that shows what solutions we offer from the left to the right on the left left to the right are the solutions in the on the left is the hardest solutions on the right are the easiest solutions if you all that you can do is you can prepare an excel file punch in the data into the excel file drag and drop it i just showed you a demo you will be able to generate e invoices if you are a little bit more sophisticated if you are if you are a software provider use our apis you will just press a button you will be able to generate e invoices we just showed that to you if you have other standard software like tally and sap we have solutions for the same so this is an overview of our solutions and i will, we just ran through the demo here is our pricing i will leave this on the screen while i answer questions from uh, others if you have any questions please do raise your hand mr masilamani yeah I'll, i'll unmute you go ahead are you there and okay uh, let's go to other people if you have any questions please sir, sir, i have i have sir i have questions yes sir tell me sir hello we can hear you sir please go ahead sir. are you able to hear yes 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 for p 3 four invoices in a day whether is that all three invoices for a single party can be combined for the e invoice Sir, each invoice has to be generated separately, sir. Separately, excellent. Okay, and another typical problem normally we face even now also the net is not working properly for us. 
the last date of every month i am raising invoices up to 10 o'clock 11 o'clock in the night due to some reason if the net is not working i am unable to load the invoice in the e chalan e uh, portal what to do because next day is next month sir if if you are not able to generate e invoice you will not be able to generate e way bill if you are not able to generate e way bill you cannot move your goods okay so there are some okay there are some exceptional scenarios where people said they the government portal is down i am not able to generate e invoices what to do in those scenarios at least you might be able to generate a manual e way bill and you can try oh, to move the goods okay. but if you are telling yes, me your internet is down you cannot even go to the e way bill portal so then i don't think you should yes. you will be able to move goods and then e way bill for the multi transit so for example sometimes i am moving the goods in single invoice but it is taken by three four transporters each transporter is entering on the bottom part two they are referring everything how to do in this system sir there is multi vehicle e way bill is available today and it is available in the e invoice regime also you can do a multi vehicle e way bill okay i mean sir correct me if i am wrong okay let i to check that sir in the new portal whether it's uh, allowing or not we have to check no that's why my you can always change the vehicle numbers part b of the e way bill can always be updated sir every time change in vehicle change in the multi mode you can update that thank you and uh, additional are you check, sending in three vehicles or the same vehicle uh, same say, vehicle what is doing Uh, up to one particular place after that another vehicle is taking the same material yeah yeah so uh, that is just updating the e way bill with the different vehicle details that yes, is possible yes 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 that's possible sir okay then additional instruction like payment terms everything because e way bill uh, e invoice is carried by the transporter finally it is now your portal also clearly says that automatic transmit of invoice to the recipient is not uh, currently not available so it means that this invoice is going first to the buyer additional instruction like payment terms and others one to one we have some instruction that whether it's possible to include in the e invoice payment terms all those details there is a provision in the e invoice schema to include it so you should be able to uh, you should be able to provide that in the schema also sir okay are we allowed to see the invoices raised by my seller in the portal invoices raised by your seller to you me. can see it only in the gstr1 portal right now there is no uh, way to see e invoices how to see the cancelled e invoices later stages within the 72 hours you can see it sir after that it's not possible after that it's not possible whether cancelled or not cancelled you cannot see it in the e invoice portal that's why again we are recommending please use proper software make sure that you do, do not lose track do not lose history of these invoices some i mean lots of users have asked about a demo on tally we were not planning to do a tally demo today here maybe we'll do it for our next webinar there are videos on tally just search gsts and tally demo on youtube you will be able to Uh, get it uh, sorry we are not planned to do a demo today okay okay mr rohit uh, sorry uh, there is a requirement of uh, showing a demo through tally can uh, show a demo debit note debit note link the original invoice debit note mr rohit you are yeah. muted yeah hi sir yeah yeah Um, so my question was related to the yeah, pricing of the uh, software. So currently we are having four different registrations in India. So uh, if we go for the user Excel, uh, so can you please explain like how the pricing will work in that particular scenario? So uh, user Excel, right? So the user yeah. Excel has a one time. Uh, just a second, could you please unmute the others who are not speaking? Uh, so the user Excel has a one time cost because we'll have to uh, integrate it to you, right? So the first year is fifteen k. subsequent years is 5k sir so it will be so like if you have uh, multiple gstns we can accommodate it as long as the templates are the same 
yeah the template will remain the same it's just the four different registration so it will be like 50000 for the first year and for the next subsequent years there will be 5000 per year so there will be though no that is AMC, correct, sir, yeah. there there will be no like uh, uh, monthly charges on using this particular software no okay and one more thing like for b2b e invoicing we can use this software so what about the b2c invoices uh, like we can use this software to generate the, those invoices also yeah so you can punch them yeah you you can generate b2c here yes okay uh, so currently like we are using an in house even in your excel if you remove the gst number see my suggestion is if you are using invoice software please try to use api integration my suggestion is okay. not to change your workflow okay because there is some reason you have chosen that software right yeah. So don't change your existing workflow. If you're using some software, software is working fine. Try to contact the developer if it's in-house. Try to get the API done. Again, there are some people in the call who have used our APIs. It takes one day, two days of work to get the APIs running. It will work very well. If you're using Excel, that's a lot more work. There, there could be a lot more errors and all that, right? Okay. So currently we are using NetSuite, the Oracle-based software for our accounting purposes. So uh, it will be possible to like integrate uh, that system with your system so that we can raise the invoicing and the B2C invoices. Yes, sir. So in fact, we have NetSuite partners who have uh, provided an integration. So you prepare the invoice in NetSuite, you press a button, uh, you will get the invoices. Yeah. Okay. So like, uh, how can we contact uh, some of your team members or any of your team members so that we can get a demo or like uh, get in contact with the team so that we can get it done? Sure. I'll leave my contact details here. So okay. please reach us at support at gstzen.in over email. And here is our phone number. Okay. And, and one more Again. thing, like how, how long it will take to get integrated all these things? Because as you know, the April is approaching so fast. So NetSuite integration will take some time, sir. It will not happen in a day or two. Uh, I, I do not know the exact timeline. I can tell you the, about the other solutions. Tally integration is maybe half an hour, one hour. Okay. Um, SAP is a few days. Excel is a few. Your own Excel is one hour, two hours. GST is an Excel is ready made. Right away there is two minutes. You sign up, you are ready. Okay. So, uh, NetSuite, the NetSuite could take some time. So, but like uh, within a period of 10 to 12 days, because obviously after 15 should days. Should be then... possible, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I will get in touch with you uh, after this webinar so that we can get it done. Um, so thank thank you so much for your support. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Sorry, a couple of them were asking about uh, uh, tally demo. Can I just quickly take two minutes and show them? Sure. Okay. All right. So here is the uh, I am just showing tally ERP nine, same applicable to tally prime also. When you use GST Zen. Uh, uh, the e invoice add-on, there is a button called GST Zen, which will help you B2B invoice, B2C invoice, eWebill and other things. I'm going to B2B invoice. I can see invoice register, all the invoices generated uh, during the period will be visible. There are different colors. Green indicates is with eWebill, blue indicates only invoice. So let me just generate one, uh, a new invoice. Let's say I am posting an invoice today on, uh, We'll say 14th March. So we are in 15th March. I'm doing an invoice for the backdated. So you can also know that backdated is permitted. And uh, let me uh, sell some item. So I'm just putting some items and uh, I'm making a sale of this item. And it is an IGST transaction for me. So I am recording my IGST. So you can see I can enter if I enter my uh, vehicle details, so right now my transporter ID and the vehicle number. So all this I am leaving blank. So either my vehicle number is blank or transporter ID is blank. So eWebill will not be generated. I'll be able to generate e invoice alone. You can see IRN acknowledgement number, everything is blank. So this is just a test invoice. So I will uh, generate an e invoice for it. Now you can see in my e invoice register. Let me do it in 15. You can see this is one black color. So it's just 
pending for generating. I can go to uh, invoice pending also. There's a feature. I'll say invoice pending. Even if you have 100 things, you just press control space bar. All the things will be getting selected. All that you will do is on the right side, you can see this upload invoice button. You'll click this upload invoice. So it connects to GST Gen portal and connects to the government uh, portal. And you can see invoice is generated. Now I'll go back to invoice register. So this is the entry which we have entered on 14th March. You can see the invoice uh, date is of 14th March. On the right side top, you will see it is 14th March. Here you can see the acknowledgement number as 15th March. So which means I have done a backdated invoice today. Portal will permit. And when I print this invoice, I'll just print this invoice. I can, you can see uh, the invoice is printed with the QR code, IRN acknowledgement number, everything is there. That's all it takes to generate an invoice from the tally. So there's a small TDL which the support team can uh, do a patch up integration with the things and you are good to go for generation of emails. So the time that it take, taken to show the demo, that's all the time it takes for you to go live. Thank you, Venu, for the very quick uh, demo. Yeah, any other questions to anyone? Most of the questions in the chat have been answered. In case if some of the questions are still unanswered, you can always reach to us, support at gstzen.in. And some of you wanted to test our APIs. Uh, the, there is an API documentation. You can reach to the mail ID is also there, support at gstzen.in. You can reach to us. We will share you the integration document. You can try it before you subscribe to the product. Yeah. Mr. Anandwan, go ahead. Sir, I have uh, one more question that I want to know that uh, uh, I, <clears throat> my this question is related to the e invoicing. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, is it optional or mandatory? Sir, if your turnover is more than twenty crores uh, from first April, no, sir, you no, have no, 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 sir. That I know. Okay, uh, but I want to know that while uploading uh, the in e invoice e invoice detail. Uh, for uh, like uh, uh, for the IRN. Now, uh, suppose if I don't put, as you told that if I don't put the uh, required e invoice detail, okay, so that it won't be generated, okay, and then I, then I have to go and generate it ma ma manually, and uh, and if I put all the transported details and all the required inputs, which is for uh, which is essential for e uh, like uh, e webil, the, only then it will generate the e invoice. Is it like that? If uh, if 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 it matches the criteria of uh, generating e invoice, like uh, if it matches the criteria of e webil, yeah. So the portal has an ability to uh, generate e webil along with the invoice. Right now, I have shown in my tally demo one invoice. If I have entered the vehicle numbers parallelly along with the e invoice, e webil will also be generated by the system. System will take care of it. Okay, okay, okay. But it, it means uh, if if the if the if the e invoice is eligible for e way bill and I put the all the required inputs of e way bill, then it will generate automatically. Isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You are right. Okay, sir. Thank you. Mr. Arun, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Yes. My question yes. is. Yeah. Are you getting me? Yeah. Yes. Little echo, but please go ahead. E invoice is uh, raised, but there remains some mistake. Can it be rectified by issuing debit note or credit note? Yes, yes sir. Possible. So once an invoice is generated, instead of uh, for hundred rupees, you generated it say for one twenty. For the differential twenty, you can raise a credit note. You can want to up make it to 150. You can raise a debit note, make it by 30, and it becomes 150. All that it is, you can rectify through credit note, debit note, but not amending an invoice. Once generated, you cannot amend it. Right, sir. Thank you very much. So nice of you. Thank you. Welcome. So that brings us to the end 
of this webinar thank you all for participating and thank you for being patient it took a while longer than i anticipated i guess i was just too slow uh, to start with i lost track of the time but thanks for being patient here are our support numbers uh, our email address is support@gstzen.in and our phone number is here 7406441122 so do get in touch with us for your e invoicing requirements and we hope you all have a smooth transition into the new regime come april 1st 2022 thank you thank you everyone and i'm very happy everyone are very participating thank you all